This is the PlayStation 15. And these are the Northern Lights. And here's an evil Pikachu. What all these things have in common is none of them exist. They were all imagined by Stable Diffusion. Today I'm going to really quickly show you how to put Stable Diffusion on your own PC so you can do some AI generated images on your own at home without any kind of service or any kind of money changing hands. A couple of disclaimers to start. First, I didn't make any of this and a lot of these tools are being put together by open source developers who are building on the backs of others. It seems week by week we're seeing new upgrades, new technologies coming out. And I was able to get this working in a command line format, but that was a little bit too technical. I feel like now that we have a GUI version, this is going to be a lot more approachable for a lot more people. Starting with the technology that you need on your machine, you will need a decent video card. Generating this stuff requires a lot of space and a lot of computer calculations that are done on your GPU. Depending on the model that you choose, and we're going to go into that a little bit later, you can save a little bit of space, but I would say you probably need 10-15 gigs of free space available at least. Your computer processor and your system RAM can vary, but you also want a lot of video memory for this type of operation. So six gigabytes of video RAM is probably a great target to shoot for. If you're gonna go through with this, we're gonna be installing Python as well as Git onto your computer as well. If you're not already familiar with those programs, you don't necessarily need to be. They just need to be installed on your system so that the automated processes can function. Simply follow the first link in the description to visit the Python download and choose the correct package for your system. If you have a 64-bit system like most of us do, the Windows 64-bit package is likely the best installer for your system. As long as you're choosing the correct file for your system, as well as most of the default options, you should be absolutely fine here. The only thing to be mindful for, especially with Python, is to make sure to include it as part of your path if you get that option. Next, you want to do the exact same thing with the Git installer. Simply navigate to their website, download the correct version for your system, and install it. It's as easy as that. For anyone that has any concerns, Python is simply a programming language. It allows your computer to run Python files. Git is a distributed software platform that will allow your computer to download things on the fly as Stable Diffusion needs it to function. The next thing we need, of course, is Stable Diffusion itself. So we're going to go to GitHub where the project is stored, and we're going to use the code button to download the zip file. Now I should note that this isn't the main Stable Diffusion project. This is a forked version that allows us to use a web UI, but it's going to give us a lot easier access to a lot of the functionality of Stable Diffusion. And most importantly, just the ease of access. After using the command line version, having to type out the entire command prompt each time, it's really annoying if I'm being honest. Next on the agenda to download are the models themselves, and these are the big files. The reason they're so massive is they hold all the training data for the actual AI. For this, we're actually getting the original Stable Diffusion model, and you do have an option here. I would suggest the bottom one, which is the much larger version. It's a more complete model, and it should give you better results. If you really need to save space, that's kind of the only reason you'd want the first model, in my opinion. The next models that we want to download are specifically for face restoration and it looks like you're able to use multiple, so I would suggest the 1.3 and the 1.4. This gave me much better facial results than when I was messing with that command line version. Those images were cursed and terrifying. All right, so that was a lot of steps. Let's recap. First, we want to install Python, and then we want to install Git. Once those two things are installed, we should be good to go on everything else. Inside your downloads folder, you want to take the zip file of the UI stable diffusion that we downloaded and unzip it anywhere on your computer that you like. Navigating into that folder, you're going to see all the files and you're going to want to drop the model files directly into the folder along with everything else. The other thing that you're going to want to do is rename the official stable diffusion model that we downloaded into simply model.ckpt as you see here. Also in that folder, towards the bottom, you see a little file called webui-user. You can actually click on that now. Go ahead and launch it. It's going to take a while. Firing that off launches Python scripts, which are going to tell Git to start installing things for you. It's going to install a number of dependencies, and the very first time you launch this thing, it's going to take a minute. My system's no slouch, and I thought the install process actually hung, but I clicked on the command window, I pressed enter, and it seemed to go through. When it gets to the point where it tells you that there's a process running on an IP address, you're ready to rock. You just want to leave that command window open or minimize it and go to your web browser, type in that IP address exactly with the colon and the port and everything, and you should see this interface in your web browser. 
Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to be an expert on stable diffusion, on AI or any of that stuff, so I really don't know how to guide you in terms of how to create the best images. I suggest experimenting. The things that I noticed by using this interface is that the batch count slider will change how many images come out. The sampling steps takes a much longer period of time when you have more sampling steps, but you tend to get higher quality images. So experimentation, I think, is going to be the key to generating stuff that you really want to enjoy. In the upper left corner, you'll notice the different tabs, and those are different programs within the Stable Diffusion project. Text to image does what it says. You are able to type in a text prompt, and that's what we're familiar with in terms of DAL-E and things that are similar. But another thing that you can do is called image to image, where you can submit an image and have it generate images that are similar or expand upon that image. So there's really a lot of options that this interface makes a lot more accessible without having to type in different file names and things like that. Another thing this tool does to make things a lot easier to understand is it really kind of skips the part where you have to learn how machine learning functions. Changing sampling methods here, for example, is just going to generate different types of images and give you different results. You don't necessarily need to know how it works or how to tweak it. And for most of us, that's a great thing. Huge props to the developer that put this together, as well as the open source developers that have continued to work on projects like Stable Diffusion. You know, bringing more and more of this technology out into the open is just awesome. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this. Thank you again for your time, and as always, thanks for watching.